I know, so I'm going to cast Mark of the Wild on you. Thank you. If you click it off, I'm going to be very upset. <laughs> what? Wait, why would you Why would you be upset if I clicked off Mark of the Wild? Because I'll have to reapply it, of course. Oh, because it'll make your... You know, you have, you'll have up. like a week or... Okay, yeah, 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 I, exactly. I, I get where you're going for. Okay, so what are we talking about today? Basically, for those who don't know, the there are talent previews for Dragonflight um, for both Druid and Death Knight that showed up today. And they, I think that they were actually pretty telling on a lot of cool and unique things that uh, with the systems that we are going to be gaining in Dragonflight. Of course, go look at these on Wowhead. Go look at these on like the World of Warcraft website as well. Those are the two places that uh, they're posted. Wowhead has like um, all of the talents basically listed that you're going to be gaining. And they also have pictures of like the diagrams. So uh, these are going to be linked down in the description. Go take a look at those. Uh, it, it, may, it may help you to follow along while you're watching this video, but while you're looking at them. What are your initial impressions of this whole talent system, though? Yeah, so I, I mean, I've looked through all seven of the ones that we've seen so far, and I've looked through the abilities and stuff, and I, my initial impression is pretty positive. There's a few talent trees that I feel are more interesting than others. Uh, for instance, Blood Death Knight feels really powerful, but I'm a Blood Death Knight main, so I understood it better than a lot of the other ones. Whereas, um, like, if you just look at the bottom stuff that the Blood Decay gets, obviously you can't see, see just from the pictures, but like when you yeah, read you through the it. things there, there are some bananas effects, and you can pick a lot, uh, especially when you factor in on the DK like class side of things. There's so much good stuff on the on just the generic DK tree oh, as well. So, awesome. yeah, it's um. Uh, here's, I, the I, here's the blow one. Yeah, like <laughs> some of this stuff, uh, un like you get a big explosion at the end of your vamp blood based on how much you know death strike healing you do. Most of it, though, for most of these specs, is either reusing current Shadowlands talents, yes, reusing current passive effects, yes. or reusing. Artifact traits, Azerite traits, or conduits. Torghast uh, powers, Legion legendaries. There are a few Torghast powers. Yeah, there's Orbit Breaker, which to me, I, I think it's a great thing to add on the talent row. Uh, that, that That's a really cool uh, effect. I, I've seen a ton of Legion legendaries and a ton of artifact weapon abilities um, being yeah. added as well. So it's basically just like a bunch of the old um, borrowed power stuff coming back in some meaningful capacity. There is a bit of discourse it, negatively, which... I, I won't lie, I don't fully follow so why. There's a few different ones. Uh, one is like, they're taking away stuff that we currently have, and we're just going to next expansion come in and click the same buttons we already have and okay. get back what we are giving up you know, to the talent system, which uh, in a few cases, that's that's basically what the top like third of the talent tree is, and then maybe the Everything middle on the third left is side. like... Everything on the left the, side. <laughs> well, not even everything on the like on the left side. There's a ton of stuff that you couldn't get before that you can get access to. Like, yeah, okay, if you want Death Strike and AMS, you've got to go get those again from the top of this tree. But if you want Will of the Necropolis and like a cheat death effect as a DPS DK, those are now on the menu. You know, yeah, if sure. you want, uh, there's, so there's all kinds of new stuff that you can get from the left hand sides as well. And then um, it's it, like, yeah, you will still be doing some of that though. You will still be spending some points to pick up stuff that you used to have for free effectively. It's very um, interesting, too, because, like, I, I feel like you're not sacrificing much with the amount of points that you're going to be given. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have 31 through. on the class tree and 30 on the spec tree. So the big thing, like, the bottom three rows have the real bangers, and you can only spend 11 or 10 points on those, respectively, depending on which side of the tree we're looking at. So you are going to have to make some choices. You are going to have to pare down, you know, you can't take everything that you want from there, but I think that's good. The The complaint that I think resonates more with me, but is less of a, of a permanent problem, is that some of the treat, like a Rester Druids, for instance, a lot of them, a lot of the choices, it's like pretty clear, like, oh, here's a single target healing one, and here's a raid healing one. Yeah. And uh, so it, 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 like, you could imagine there being a pretty cookie cutter, like, okay, here's the one where you've picked all the single target buttons, here's the one where you've picked all the raid buttons. Uh, and that could, I could see that being like a little bit less exciting for them than for other trees. But that sort of thing is something that is much more easily fixable than like a fundamental design flaw, right? That's, that's, uh, that's something that you can fix with tuning. A couple of things that we've seen that have been a bit controversial. One, we were meaning about it a second ago, Mark of the Wild. The second one, there's like an AMS with uh, runic power thing for Death Knight that I saw. AMZ. Or AMZ yeah, with the. There's an AMZ power. upgrade that makes it give you runic power, which that one will be. Uh, that will be pretty good for the old Frost DK. 
Uh, yeah, so there, you can take Anti-Magic Zone in the fifth row, yeah. and then down in the seventh row, you can get uh, ah. Assimilation. The amount absorbed is increased by 10%, not too much, and it grants up to 100 runic power as it gets fully absorbed. So um, not a huge OP talent, I don't think, although it will be nice for, I think, Breath of Syndragosa Frost DKs. <laughs> if, if they're in that middle tree, that's going to be nice for them. But the problem is the middle is kind of... It's kind of not easy to be in the middle, I think, if you are a, a Frost DK. Like, if you're a Frost DK, there's That's a lot of core stuff that is on the left that you really want. Like, you, there's a charge of Empower Rune Weapon down at the bottom, and then you may want to go over onto the right-hand side as your other kind of uh, splash uh, uh, to pick up Soul Reaper and stuff like that that's over there. It's a, there's a lot of power, a lot of damage over there. Is that the, pro is that the problem with this? Is like, Maybe. I'm, really not hard, I'm not sure how really much that's going to be. Nodes. Yeah, I mean, you can only pick two of... Empower Rune Weapon, Abomination Limb, and Soul Reaper, which are the three bottom buttons there. Yeah. So that's all. It's it's gonna you're gonna have to be making some choices for sure. Yeah. But if you want the left and the right ones, you there's I don't think there's any way you'll be able to go down the middle for AMZ. So that's gonna be a uh, something. It, it'll, I mean, it'll, I'm sure that there's just gonna be different builds depending on what stuff you want, and some will some will definitely include the AMZ. That's Druid. Mark of the Wild returns. And for those who don't know what Mark of the Wild is, it's it's a class buff. And it basically increases your... This is a little bit different than what it used to be. It used to be like primary stat. Apparently now it's speed and critical strike chance for 3% and reduces their magic damage taken by 3% for 60 minutes. That's broken, by the way. Um, it, if the target is in your party or raid, all party and raid members will be affected. This is just another raid buff that they're adding on top of the game. And I've seen a lot of pushback for this because basically most of the people that you and I run into um, really heavily dislike raid buffs and it feels like the system is failing the people that it's supposed to be helping. So like in theory, the system is supposed to be good for Havoc Demon Hunters. It's supposed to be good for like Windwalker Monks. It's supposed to be good for these specs that struggle to see play and otherwise like wouldn't see play without a raid buff. However, what you have in previous uh, patches seen is Mistweaver Monks, Brewmaster Monks, Vengeance Demon Hunters, uh, taking these raid buffs and then like the people that it's supposed to be helping, they're not helping by, they're not being helped by it. Mark of the Wild, it's probably not going to be difficult to get this into your raid. Druid is very popular, but it's just another like mandatory slot in your raid that you have to fill. Yeah, I, I will say like, I think this functionally doesn't change anything about raid comps. Like I've never seen in my life a raid comp without a Druid already. So yeah, that basically doesn't change anything. Um, but yeah, I mean, if it were a case of like, okay, we're going from five classes having raid buffs to all 12 or all 13, I think I could be down for that. I think that might be better than just half of them having them, but yeah. it's not like DK is getting anything like exactly. this. Exactly. I so guess we know that DK yeah. is not. <laughs> so, okay. We know that in these early mock-ups of the Dragonflight yeah. uh, talents. Now DK maybe you is... count AMZ or something as, uh, as comparable, but. I don't know. I, I, I do think, that, yeah, I, like I, I, I think that this is not the best way to encourage representation of, of different specs because it does really create this such a weird paradigm where like, yeah. you know, that first Havoc Demon Hunter is so much more valuable than the second. And it creates such a weird thing in guilds where it's like, we kind of want to have exactly one Havoc Demon Hunter who never misses any raids. Because like, if we have two, we're going to be sitting one all the time. But if we have zero, we are, you know, 5% less damage and uh, that's down tremendous and that's effectively if they're under tuned right that's that's not even necessarily yeah right. if, they, if they're well like i mean if they if they are doing competitive damage on their own front then yeah you bring multiple but then that just makes missing like if you happen to be a guild is missing one you get yeah. super punished in a way that you randomly don't with some other specs okay so something that i did notice uh, did you feel like we were just like missing a lot of baseline abilities in these talent trees you had to like talent into like really default stuff uh, obviously we have a lot of points um but but just in general, it felt like a lot of these things were pretty much givens in the previous expansion, and now they're like things that you have to talent into. Examples being interrupts. Examples being like anti magic zone having to talent into that's kind of weird. Uh, having to talent into death strike, <laughs> obviously. Like yeah, I I don't hate that it gives you kind of some some customization. Like if you're a DPS death knight, you can go for giga tanky. Uh, stuff from the death knight tree you know you can yeah like yes you have to you have to spend the point on death knight you know or on death strike right but like you get to spend the point on will the necropolis on blood whatever sucky thing down there below will the necropolis that's like some three minute cheat death uh aoe explosion drain thing yeah okay um so i don't know i i 
like given the amount of points we've got, I, I will have to like make some trees to see how restrictive it feels. If it feels like I'm spending 25 of my 30 points, just like getting back to where I was, that's not going to feel great. But so far, like looking at it, I mean, you, you know, you can imagine that's not a needing <laughs> like, do you, do you need chains of ice there at the top left? Eh, uh. Probably not. Although you do. So you need that if you want to take the interrupt below it, apparently. So you, you'd have to take that and then take the interrupt because you can't go up. Like the little up diagonals apparently don't work. So Is it banned. Yeah, you have to go. You always have to be going down or sideways, but you can't go up and sideways. That's, yeah, so, and, and I mean that's yeah. so awkward in some situations. Where like, the, is this is this really mandatory? I guess technically no, but is this mandatory? Yes. Well, yeah. So it's like in M plus, right? You always have to have that for raid. Maybe you don't talent in it. I can foresee there being some fun things in raid fights where it's like, okay, we need some interrupts here, and all the DPS groan, and then we start having arguments about who loses the least damage to spend five talent points on an interrupt. How do you feel about uh, restoration being able to like talent into? Interrupt? I don't hate that. I think healers I think, I think being able a... to talent inter interrupts is fine. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it's super cool. But it's it's a it's a weird thing because like um so basically their phil uh, their philosophy for the talent rows in general is you're supposed to be able to pick like two out of three of these nodes, uh two out of two out of three of the tree, um and so then like one side of the tree is or one like chunk of the tree is not supposed to be able to be talented into, and, and that can be cool. At the same point. I think that's something that Dratno said is like if you feel like you're back exactly where you were um prior, like that's going to be awkward. But overall it feels like the left side of the tree is just like your your class fantasy baseline stuff. The right side of the tree is where you're really getting into your spec specific cool abilities. It, and that's that's like the biggest thing for me is like I felt like at least with the Moonkin one, like obviously that's my area. Oh, of they're so cool, yeah. There's, there's a lot of really cool shit in here. Obviously, very bland stuff. Like, why do I have to talent in a solar beam? That's like a really weird one. But it's in the middle of the it's in the middle of the tree, so I'm gonna begrudgingly talent into it every single time, pretty much. But it's like, it's it's so interesting to see like what they've given back with like the legendaries and and previous yeah. expansions effects and being able to have. It's not like I'm restricted by only wearing two legendaries this time. I can wear six legendaries from previous expansions and kind of get the best of everything. Yeah. Blood DK, you know, two piece and four piece are in there. We're, uh, that spec is going to be so good. And there's so many different options for how you can build this thing as well. I mean, with both the left and the right trees, there's, there's is literally that, huge optionality in here. Is that what this DRW is right here? Is uh, the... that one's the legendary that we have right now, actually. The, oh, okay. But there's, uh, there is like the two piece or it's either the two piece or the four piece. I think it might just be the, it's the one where you get extra time on your rune weapon. Is, it's, is probably, it's, them, probably yeah. one, it's probably this rune weapon one then. It, it, but Maybe. It's, like, it's super cool to see like, cause then like Bonestorm and Purgatory are here. So like now you're able to actually talent into Purgatory. I don't want to say yeah. freely, but for like blood, like you're able to get well, into Purgatory without like having to give up a ton. Yeah. I mean, so you're, you're going to have 10 points to spend down below the, below that threshold. Right. So you kind of get to pick two of the four big things at the bottom. Exactly. Uh, and that's going to be, I mean, Purgatory Rune Weapon or the Bone Storm and the big AOE Vamp Blood Explosion. Like I could imagine any, any two of those four being good builds, depending on the situation, whether you want to go full damage, whether you want some kind of hybrid, what, what you're trying to mitigate uh it's uh, like yeah that's the spec i'm most familiar with here and it's also the one i'm most excited for and if that's true for everybody that they're like the spec they're most familiar with is the one they're most excited for out of, from reading the talents that's really good news yeah i i think i think it's i think it's really interesting it, it's it's going to be cool because a lot of these trees like look at look at the bottom nodes they're not designed ex exactly the same like the rest of druid one has so many of these bottom nodes that yeah they have to pick from whereas like other other classes and other specializations just have different like varying amounts of these bottom rows like uh the frosty k one you only have like three of these but you also have these like auxiliary well, side one point and it, it costs bangers. a lot of points to get down to look at it like you need two two point nodes to get to breath of Cindergosa, right so or to yeah. the obliteration ice cap side so that's pretty much going to be mutually exclusive which which those sides you go down yeah, so you're going to get like this, and then you're going to get this middle one, and then... Yeah, and then the middle bit, yeah, or left and, and the middle bit, because that's be like that, that left side is like... Yeah. Well, the left side is... There's a lot of cool stuff there for not doing breath, because there's a lot of stuff on Frost Strike over there, so... Yeah. Maybe. Maybe, that, but you historically, that build's been worse than breath, but we'll see. Hopefully, they but at the, least keep them close. But then something that is to note, like, whenever you're looking at some of the other... Uh, uh, classes is like look at look at this pillar of frost placement so they they, they intentionally put I, I i suspect that they intentionally put like pillar of frost like in the dead it's hard to tree. imagine not selecting that node exactly. yeah especially given given how much uh conflict there is between the left and right branches of the tree that you probably aren't going to pick both of those and ignore the middle and so like for feral same thing with berserk right you're almost with, taking like, that 
Same thing with like tranquility. Like it, they're talents, but they're functionally like almost auto selects because of where they are in the in the tree. Um, so it allows you to basically freely get them, which is like one, which is like okay, yeah, why well, does love us? But like, I, I, yeah, I think like it's so cool. Ninety five percent of the time, you'll take that. Although it's you could if you wanted to not take it. But yeah, I mean, like, are you are you playing in Holy Death Night without Army of the Dead and Dark Transformation? Yeah, like look or, at this. Okay, it's dude. DT and Army in the middle. Yeah. Of in the, in the middle yeah, of the so tree, like, like yeah, all right, okay, those but, those yeah. points are pretty uh pretty hard committed. They but, may as you it know. may as well be scourge strike or whatever that's at the top. Yeah, it's like okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. I don't know. I, I think overall the the talent mock up is super cool. I, I'm excited to really see how it plays out. Something that is kind of interesting to me is like, um, it didn't look like any specs were getting reworks from what we saw and from what we were reading. It sounded like they were all reading based on like Shadowlands blueprints of the specs in the classes which may be like how, how indicative of that is what we're going to see whenever the Shadowlands alpha comes out. Like, is that going to really ruffle some feathers or are people going to be kind of upset if their class doesn't get like reworks? Um, I, do you have any really opinions on that? Or is that kind of like a wait and see moment? Because for me, it's yeah. kind of like, I'm, I'm hopeful that they'll, they'll stay respect, uh, responsive to the feedback from people that play the class a lot. Um, I think knee jerk responses, we should be careful as a community to avoid having those. And <laughs> instead like, like get in there and try and build some trees and see if you're noticing something, see if there's like something that is, is really making the tree worse for you. And I think if you write it out in a, in a reasonable ma manner and put it in the, uh, the right form, I actually, it seems like they are, it seems like they're taking that kind of feedback fairly well over the past year or so. So, uh, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful for that to continue, but I will say the initial, just the initial talent trees I'm already pretty excited by. You have a guesstimate on when the beta is coming out because this was this actually kind of th I think caught everybody yeah. off guard that we were getting these talent trees today. Well, I mean, there there were people that were expecting it for a while now uh, because they said they were going to try and do this before they got beta out. So you know, two talent trees today. If they do two talent trees tomorrow and two the next day, we could have beta by next week, right? If they just do two per day, then we'll run out of t out of classes this time next week. We would also There's have no way they'll YouTube. slow down, right? There's no way they're just doing YouTube two per videos. week, right? They're doing two per day for sure, two classes per day. Yeah, <laughs> you hear that copium <laughs> that Dratnos is on. for sure, for sure. Especially over the weekend, they they definitely work on the weekends. So yeah, they definitely work on the weekend. In the meantime, yeah. I, I think I'm overall like a balance is a spec that I'm most familiar with. I'm super excited about. It. There's a couple of things that I'm like kind of worried about, like our AOE rotation and like class design. But this is something that I suspect that they're going to hit as we iterate on to beta. So overall, I think the talent, the talent trees have me pretty hopeful. I think it's, I think that they are really cool. Being able to have flexibility of points is something super solid. Are you guys excited about the talent trees? Pessimist? Do you guys hate Mark of the Wild returning? The rest of us? Let us know in the comments. <laughs> Please comment. I, we need it for the algorithm. Please, the algorithm. We need it so bad. Yeah, we need, we need as many comments as possible. If we could get 100 comments on this video, <laughs> it would make me happy. Maybe. I doubt that. I, I do <laughs> not believe you. In the meantime, we will be back next week with another YouTube video. See you guys later. Goodbye.